March 25th, 1931. In the heat of the Great Depression, there's a train going to Memphis from Chattanooga. Most of the people aboard the train were searching for jobs because of the Great Depression. And there was a group of nine black boys who found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was a group of four white young people, two boys and two girls. The girls were both mill workers and notorious prostitutes from Huntsville. Victoria Price was 21 years old. She was the older of the two and the instigator of the whole case. Ruby Bates was the younger of the two. She was a minor at only 12 years old. The two groups were both minding their own business. The situation began when one of the white boys got up and stepped on the hand of Haywood Patterson. One of the nine black boys. A fight ensued, and soon a stone throwing fight broke out between the groups. The group of black boys was larger, and they threw the whites off the train. They threw all of them off, except for one, which they pulled back because the train was traveling at a life endangering speed. The group of whites went straight to the sheriff to tell that their friend was still on the train. The sheriff called ahead to the train station in Paint Rock, Alabama, and the train was stopped. The prostitutes came up to the sheriff and made up a story of how the group of black boys had raped them on the train to get the attention of the law off themselves for prostituting in a different state while Ruby Bates was still a minor. The nine innocent boys were arrested and put on trial. The trials continued on for seven grueling years. This case was a major event that led up to the Civil Rights Movement. It was, quote, one of the most shameful examples of injustice in our nation's history. Haywood Patterson received 75 years in prison instead of the death sentence. The verdict represented the first time in the history of Alabama that a black man convicted of raping a white woman had not been sentenced to death. Seven of the nine Scottsboro boys had been held in jail for six years before their trials had even begun. The Scottsboro boys were tried without adequate counsel and hastily convicted on the basis of shallow evidence. Ruby Bates later confessed that she had lied about the rape case and the Scottsboro boys had never even talked to her. She became a witness for the defendants, but the all-white jury still found all of them guilty. In 1935, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the defendant's constitutional rights were violated because blacks were systematically excluded from the jury roles. The Scottsboro Boys case obviously shows the horrendous degree of racism in the South during the Great Depression. Because of indifferent jurors and career-motivated prosecutors, the self-serving and groundless accusations of a single woman were allowed to change forever the lives of nine black teenagers who found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time.